Tonight we are going to start talking about uh, databases in SQL. And uh, hopefully you guys have had a little bit of experience with SQL. Is, ha have you? Maybe a little bit? Tiny, tiny bit? All right, well, um, <laughs> we're gonna go over the basics tonight anyway. So even if you haven't, then you should be okay. But uh, hopefully this will all be a review. Um, <clears throat> The first slide that I have here is this basic um, CRUD operations here, create, read, update, and delete. So if you want to create a new record in your database, we do that with an insert statement. So it looks like this. Insert into, and then you're going to give your table name, and I use vehicles um, as my table. So vehicles, and then I listed out the fields that we're going to uh, be inserting our data into. So then make model year and then I listed the values that we're going to actually insert into them. So the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, ABC is the van, Ford is the make, Mustang is the model, and 1998, 88, excuse me, is the year. All right. And those sets are enclosed in parentheses. Now it's possible to do insert into and then just do values without listing out your fields. I I don't like that. I don't encourage it really because if anything else changes in the structure of your database, then you have to rewrite, <laughs> rewrite it. And um, also, it's just I think it leaves uh, it leaves you open to some issues. So um, I generally always list them out. So um, I guess if it was super long, it may save you some time. But in any case, um, it is possible to do that. But uh, this is the way that I generally structure my insert statements. Um, if you're reading data from the database, you just want to go retrieve it, we use a select statement. So, and I just chose three of the fields, so I said select bin, make a model from vehicles. And so what that'll do is it'll go into the database and go bring me back the bin, make and model uh, for all the records that are in the database. Okay. Um, update, if I say update vehicles set make it equal to Chevrolet, that's going to update every single uh, record in my database and make the uh, and set the make equal to Chevrolet. So uh, we wouldn't typically do that. That's why I have my asterisks up there to tell you that you need a where clause in your updates. I won't say always, but it's pretty pretty much almost all of the time you would use a a where clause in your update statement. So. Um, then your delete, if you just say delete from models, it's going to delete everything <laughs> from your database. So, um, also you want to delete, uh, you can use um, a where, you should use a where clause with your delete statement. All right. So, um, even though I list them up here, don't, don't list them that way. You would all, you would just delete everything in the database if you don't use a where clause. Um, I didn't include truncate, but if you wanted to delete it and it'll reset all your identities, you could truncate a table instead of just deleting everything from it. So it's kind of like starting fresh. Um, just resets your table and makes it empty. So, do y'all have any questions about that? Is that thing? Have y'all seen these statements before? Or no? Seen them? Okay, not had to do them directly. Okay. Um, I, I think SQL is pretty straightforward. I know some people don't like it, but um, I think it's pretty easy to figure out what's going on, and, and you're going to do the same things over and over again. So um, that, you can do some fancier stuff with, with SQL statements, but uh, the, the normal stuff is plain. Now, say that we needed a WHERE clause, and a WHERE clause just uh, restricts the records that your query affects. So, um, when we add a WHERE clause, um, for example, before I had delete from, oh, I said model, this is wrong, I need to fix this. I should say delete from vehicles where ID equals five. I, I was just typing things off the top of my head and I must have uh, done that wrong. So I need to fix this slide, I apologize. Um, so that should say delete from vehicles where ID equals five. What that means is it's going to go to the database. It's only going to delete a record with the ID of five. It's not going to delete all of them 
like it would if I did not have a wear clause in there, okay? Um, and the update, what I had it do, I said update vehicles set make equal to Chevrolet where make equal Chevy. So suppose people have been typing it in and then we suddenly decided we wanted to make sure that everything was the same instead of some people saying Chevy and some people just saying Chevrolet, we wanted to fix it. So we, um, not that that's ever happened in any of our databases or anything like that. But um, anyway, so what this would do is all of the records that, that said Chevy, it would update them and now they say Chevrolet. So it already said Chevrolet, it's not gonna change it. If it says Ford, it's not gonna do anything to it. But if it says Chevy, now it'll say Chevrolet. And hopefully those would be the only two in your database, but maybe not if you let people freehand enter information. So, all right, does the where clause make sense? It's just where this is true, all right? Okay. Uh, the next one, this is a little more, uh, I don't know, this to me is, is a little bit more difficult to do, creating tables. Um, just because it's just not quite so straightforward exactly what you're doing, it doesn't read like plain Eng English as much. But if you want to create a new table in your database, you say create table, okay, and then you give it the table name. And so um, I've, I've given like the structure here and then this is what you'd actually do. So I said create table vehicles, all right? And I tried to do all caps in the, uh, in the actual SQL command so that it made it easier to, term, to differentiate between what was my stuff that I was just filling in on my samples and what are just, you know, the standardized stuff you would have every time. So if you look at this, so we say create table vehicles and then it's followed by your parentheses. And inside there, all I'm doing is setting up each one of the fields for the table. So um, in there, the first field is the vehicle ID. It looks a little bit different than the other one. Um, it is an integer. And I set it as an identity with one one. And what this does is it sets it up so that as you're entering data into the table, you don't actually enter the vehicle ID. It's auto incrementing it. It starts at one and it increments by one as it goes. Okay. So, um, you know, if you wanted to suddenly start all of your vehicle IDs at 1,000, you could set it so it would always start at 1,000. But we're doing just one one so it'll the first at record you enter will be have a vehicle ID of one. The second one will have a vehicle ID of two and so forth, all right? And I've also specified that it's not null, so this is a required field. And then a comma, and then we go through and set the other ones. The, the VIN is a bar chart, that's, uh, so we use that for, sh for strings. Uh, and I set it up to have 30 uh, characters in it. Our conforming VINs are only 17, but just assuming that one day they might change that, I'll, I left some extra space in there. And it's also not null. Then the make I left 50 characters for, also Vartar, it's not null. Model, the same. Uh, and then vehicle year I said is an integer, also not null. And then finally I have the constraint. So I set the constraint as uh, PK underscore T vehicles. And I said that that's the primary key, and in parentheses, I said vehicle ID. So what that does is that actually sets vehicle ID as the primary key for this table. All right, do you know what a primary key is? What is it? It's the only, I mean, it's, it's a kind of um, field that will be uh, unique for every root card, and you can, act, I mean, to identify a root card, you can use that one. Yeah, it's your unique identifier for each, for each record in your um, mm -hmm. in your table. So that this is how we know specifically this is the actual record that we're referring to. Um, but why do we have PK underscore T vehicles? Um, T vehicles is actually uh, the <laughs> PK underscore T vehicles really is just the name of this constraint. Um, by default, they do it this way when you set it. Um, if you go into like design mode, you click. Have y'all created a table before ever? Okay, you go in design mode, you just click, click on the field and you say, this is the primary key. And by default, the way it names it, it's like PK underscore whatever the name of your table is. And then, um, so, 
I just did TK underscore, and I said T vehicles because I had two tables in there. One was one was vehicles and one is Tiffany vehicles. Um, because I'm gonna let you guys connect to our dev uh, server and create your own tables. And so you're gonna need to put your name on it because I assume that they're all gonna be because it's for your address book. So, um, and I asked and Derek said it was okay. <laughs> so um, you guys will be connecting in and creating your own tables out there, which I assume will get deleted in a couple of weeks. <laughs> but um, anyway, I'll ha let you have a live server to play with. So um, that'll, you can do a lot of this stuff like in the, your local database instance of Visual Studio, but to me that doesn't really give you the same experiences that you have when you're connected to a, a server outside. So, yeah, so this is really where we do all, it's the same server we do all of our dev work on. So um, hopefully we won't crash it adding a bunch of tables. But anyway, um, so does that answer your question about, it's, it's just what I named it. It could have been anything. So the PK just kind of indicates this is the primary key constraint. It didn't have to be that way, it just is. Um, any other questions about that? All right. Wonderful. Oh. Is that table one? Hmm. I'm not sure how that ended up in the um, thing twice, but nonetheless. All right. So let's talk about joints. Have you all done joints before? Yeah. Joints. Joints are great fun. Joins are my favorite. Okay. Um, when we deal with our primary keys and foreign keys, a lot of what we have to do is to go retrieve data um, from multiple tables. And um, to do that, uh, we, we use joins. And um, I found these Venn diagrams on the internet, and I thought that they were particularly helpful um, in figuring out which data you were pulling and what kind of joins. Um, because uh, most people know how to do a join, um, but then sometimes it's hard to remember exactly what what information you're getting depending on what kind of join that you do because there are a lot of different kinds. So, an inner join returns all records from the left table that have a corresponding record in the right table. So, if we were trying to find, um, if we were dealing with our contacts and we wanted to find an address that was over in the address table, um, what we would do is we would join those two tables and you would set it up so that, you know, say your first three contacts had addresses but the last two had not had them entered in. Um, when you did your, an inner join on this table, what it would do was it would get the first three contacts and then include their address information and you have to tell it what fields. So um, they give you an example here like select, select list, so you could just do asterisks. Uh, from table A, A, enter join table B, B, on A.key equals B.key. So this is where your primary key and your foreign keys come, uh, come in handy. Uh, yeah, while we use them. Um, whenever you have a, a foreign key in a table, it's a primary key in your related table, and it tells you, oh, this address actually goes with this contact, right? So where those keys match up, that's where, um, how it knows which tables are related. And this is for relational databases. Do y'all kind of understand this stuff? Do I need to go in that more? I mean, yes. I can do that if we need to define the structure. Yes, no. I'm looking at you guys because you guys are probably the earliest in the program, so. I don't know too much about databases at all. At all? Okay. I'm gonna grab some uh, chunk. Chalk. Yeah, these little. Uh, oh, I'm gonna get, end up on the. This is when Derek really needs to be here and, and move the camera, I guess, since I'm actually gonna move around. Okay, so if you're setting up, we'll, we'll use your contact uh, table, just for example, the one that we've been using since we're all familiar with that. So you have a contact table, right? So contact is gonna be an entity, as well as the fact at, that an address book is also going to be an entity. I'm sorry, not address book, an address. An address itself. Okay. 
And so the contact is going to have a contact ID. And then it'll have like a first name, and last name. All right. And then we'll also include an address ID for it. Okay. Over here in the address table, we have our address ID. And then you'll have the fields for the address. So like street, city, state. So you have these two tables set up. So this, this represents each of the fields in contact, and this represents each of the fields in address. But when you're actually storing the data, we'll have like contact one, that's their contact. We'll put Carrie in there. And we'll say her address ID is one, right? So here is the contact ID. First name, last name, and then the address ID. I'm shortcutting these just because it's really hard to write a chalk. Okay, and then we'll put number two in there. We'll put Adam. And we'll say his contact ID is three. Okay, and you can fill this out with everybody in the room, right? And then over here in the address table, you'll have something like this, address one. And it'll be like, here's your street, River Birch, Drive, right? And then the city, and state, and the zip. You guys can see all that, right? Whatever, you know, and you'll have that data. And then you'll have address two, which is somebody else. H Street in Birmingham. And then address three will be Adam, who lives at 2780 Hackberry. He doesn't, but. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so you have each of your addresses set up like that. I didn't print it all out, but you guys know how addresses look, right? Okay, so what this does is if you say select, or outer select, say. Select first name, first name, and there's these little nubs, city, from, and we're going to select from contact, right, because contact's where we're getting um, first name from, and then we're also going to say um, enter join. Enter join address on, and now we picked a uh, contact. Oh, let me um, alias these things. Let's say from contact C. Enter join address A. I'm just making a little shortcut so I don't have to write everything out. So, so enter join on C dot address ID. equals a dot address ID because we have both of these fields we have this field in both tables so what this does is it, it'll go back and it'll result Carrie Bessemer because Carrie lives in Bessemer and then Adam Tuscaloosa because we've asked it to get the first name in the city sometimes you might see like C dot first name and a dot city because it says first name is coming from the contact table and city is coming from the address. That only works if you set it up like contact C and then address A. I know this is really hard to read. This is why I don't write on the chalkboard. <laughs> okay. Do you get the concept though, or is it? Can you read that, um, the whole statement again? Yes. It'd be like, I'm going to read it with the aliases in there. Okay. Select C dot first name, comma, A dot city, 
from contact C, enter join address A on C dot address ID equals A dot address ID. Okay, so again, that pulls two pieces of data from different tables but matches them up. That's what the inner join would do. Um, an outer join is just going to give you everything. <laughs> yes? Um, so are you saying from contact C, isn't contact the same as table? It is. Contact is just the yeah, name. She's table. using an alias to it. She could have just said contact dot address ID, but I mean, it's just shorten the name. You know, if you like, if you have ten fields that you want to look around, okay, yeah, you I don't want to write contact dot contact dot. So you just use yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you. Sorry. Okay. All right. Cool. Is that what you were asking, or were you asking like why she using the table there? No. Um. Like I thought you would just write contact for like the table right. name and not contact C. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I wrote C just to say that that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, I think it's it can be really confusing for starters. I wouldn't suggest using them at first because they've seen like a simple idea, mm -hmm. like joints. Like you'll never write a simple joint in your life. Mm -hmm. It's just not possible. So like when you get started. Don't use it at least. It's like write it out. It will be longer, and so you'll have to write a little bit more. But it's also like way more straightforward because the aliases will jump it up, especially when you've got like A, F, C, D. It's yeah. like it's really confusing. But if you're writing with a little note of chalk, you don't want to write all that stuff. Out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. So an inner joint is just going to get those records that have like that second address that's over there, that 8th Street, that's not matched to anybody in my contact table. I don't know where that address came from. It was just a blank, some made up address that doesn't belong to anybody. Uh, maybe it's Adam's old address. So, um, so that is just in their loops and it does not attach to any of my contact. So that's not going to get pulled on the inner join. That just gets ignored, basically. Because we're only pulling ones where those two fields match, the address IDs match. Okay? All right, but with an outer join, you will get it all. You'll get that extra address in there. So it would just pull those, those cities, um, which I don't know where Adam used to live. I guess that would be him. That would be his other city that doesn't exist. Okay. No, I'm sorry. In that second address. Sorry. Okay, I thought you thought I was going to Now, we, then we, in addition to the, your inner and outer joins, you also have, you can do like a, a a left join and a right join. So a left join will get you everything on the left hand table and anything that matches on the right hand table. And by the right over there where we say inner join C dot address ID equals A dot address ID. C dot address ID is the left hand side. A dot address is the right hand side. Okay. So um, if you do the right join you would get everything on the right hand side and only the stuff on the left hand side that matched. Okay. So if we had some other person out there that had an address ID of, well, it just wouldn't have an address ID of four because that doesn't exist. But anyway, hopefully your foreign key constraints would kick in and tell you that that was not allowed. But in any case, if they didn't have an address ID listed, then they just didn't have an address. So that wouldn't pull on a right join. Okay. All right. Now, a better way than writing stuff in chalk is to deal in SQL Server Management Studio. So we'll go through this stuff a little bit better, um, actually, on the screen in just a second. But did you guys were you guys able to download this SQL Server Management Studio? Uh, asked y'all to do on Wednesday night. Oh, well, we're gonna introduce it regardless and. Maybe you guys can get it downloaded um, tonight. And you say it's on Grid. Is it on Grid Spark? Probably. Mm. So where the, the full version is, but you can just download the Express version. Yeah. I, I think I don't even think I had to install it. Like I think it already was. So it's supposed stuff. to be on. It's supposed to be on the disk image on the computer to work, but it's not online. So I'm huh. hunting down Jeremy Legrum <laughs> to get it there. Well, I can't check any of my databases. Well, that's oh. that's disappointing. Well, <laughs> just run that program. <laughs> so, all right. so let's talk about SQL Server Management Studio. 
So SQL Server Management Studio is used for configuring, managing, and administering components within Microsoft SQL Server. Okay, so this is going to allow us to jump in there and just deal with our databases, get your hands dirty with it, basically. All right, uh, it will allow you to connect to multiple databases on different servers, and um, you can quickly write queries and view the results. And it's really easy to navigate between tables, between databases, between servers, things like that. So it's it organizes it really easily and um, I'll show you a few little things that I like to do when I'm um, when I'm messing around in there and uh, doing all stuff. Well, let's go ahead and open it up. So this is what it looks like and I just pinned mine because I use it a lot. And um, Derek, did you see that I set up this user? Mm -hmm. Well, I set up a user on Caps Dev for just for this database. Okay. okay. And yeah, I know we, we talked about it first, but I just didn't know if you had looked at it. All right. So the the server that I'm going to connect to is our development server, and um, we set it up with SQL Server authentication and the login is Slingshot User. Blah, blah, blah. Slingshot User. And your password is Slingshot15. Okay. Let's record this so that I'll remember that <laughs> next time. <laughs> and you only have access to one table on there, so um, even though I think it's going to list a bunch of them. But I only gave you viewable privileges on the Slingshot database. So that's the Does only thing that you can see. Is it not? Why is it? What's that? I don't know why it's not. Okay. Hang on. <laughs> yes, it's well. It's not supposed to be on the side. It's just supposed to be. I mean, I'm still showing you. Why can't you see my? Screen? Is it acting like it's a extended display or like a second screen or something? Maybe. Close that out. Close this and see if it'll let go of it. I don't know. It's not done this before. It really looks like the second screen. Well, let's see. But we can't see your mouse now. Yeah, it's. Yeah. It's not. That's exactly what it's doing. Why is it? Uh, you can go into the the resolution properties and change the mirror. Nope. I can't see that, so I can help you. Multiple displays, extend, duplicate these displays. Let me get it back over where I went first. It's not done that before. I wonder why it did that. Oh, that's weird. That's really weird. Okay. Well, let me start over. This this isn't gonna. Okay. So the server name is caps-sqldev1.caps.ua.edu. And again, the login is slingshot user, and your password is slingshot15. Nothing fancy or anything like that. Studio Express, and it says I can only connect to uh, local to SQL Server 2000, SQL Server 2005 servers. What? Uh, well, that's awesome. What version of management? What version of that is it that you use? I don't. I just 
went to the website and downloaded the Express. Um, I got that. Is that a link from W3 Schools or directly from? Um, I just one second. Google it. Um, yeah, it's just whatever whatever this is. Uh, 2005, it looks like. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there any way to choose a different version of it? Um, like try adding uh, Management Studio 2014 and see if that'll let you do the direct version. I don't recall even installing um, it on here, but it just was there. I don't know why this is telling me there's no way that the You're on Caps Wireless. Yeah, that's true. Instead of what do you mean I was on Caps Wireless? Like, like our Wi-Fi rather yeah. than the WPA2. I don't know that I've ever connected to Caps Wireless before on here. Do you think they defaulted it to it? Um, we'll see if you can connect to the VPN. And do it. Okay. But they're having that problem with the VPNs. Is the other well, end. well no. Would you have the VPN? I get to that because the VPN only connects you to Alidata, to the production stuff. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I meant VPN like you would from home to get onto our uh, local 10 dot network, like all the cap stuff. I don't know if it's. it's I could just remote into my actual desktop and do it from there. Oh, so, sorry, I'm I'm dumb. Yeah, you're you're right. Um, but since you're on WPA2, that I would figure that would be a part of the network. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's actually the problem or not. Like I'm able. To remote into my machine without using the VPN and on my machine I can go right. to that database but I don't know I don't have Windows on this machine to sit outside of that. Well we'll just try this. <laughs> I mean I was it's, I was on the same network when I was over in NERC today and I tested it today to make sure because I didn't want this to happen. Yeah. Well and this is also kind of taking a while. <clears throat> yeah. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe the connection is just so messing up and it's timing out. Okay, well, it's kind of hard to show SQL Server Management Studio. <laughs> I guess I could create, I mean, I don't, that is true. what can I do? I mean, make, I mean, maybe try to cycle the connection. I don't know. Here? Like my actual network? Can no, no, yeah, just connect from one I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm getting 30 minutes down. It should be more than enough to support it. Well, I've got a bigger piece of chalk. I guess I can go in and just write some stuff. But. Or you can just type. Well. Run a speed test real quick. I'll just do it from here. Oh, okay, that'll work. More than one way is can cat. Might decide that I should have been doing this all along.
We're able to get 2014 to download. Uh, yeah, it's downloading right now. Yeah, it may take a little while. Yeah, it's like three gigs or something. Like that. That's, exactly right. That's weird. That's the first thing that pulled up is the 2005 version. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's <laughs> awful. <laughs> And then in 2014, when I had to fill out like a form, a bunch of information. Yeah. I mean, it was really? from it was from Microsoft. Right. right? Yeah. But, but yeah. I mean, so you, got, you ended up getting the 2014 version. Yeah. <laughs> so, what is your preference of soft drink? <laughs> How many siblings do you have? Anybody been able to connect besides now me? Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, regardless, let's just go forward and we'll do it and hopefully we can get everybody connected. Um, if you look over here, this is the server that we're connected to, and of course, this is the CAP SQL Dev 1 server, and it's where we host a lot.